hello guys welcome back to my channel it's been quite some time i haven't posted for quite some time but yeah thank you for sticking around this video is titled this may never happen again in the nhl again and so i don't know what i'm about to watch but hopefully it's something good i mean if they say it may never happen again so it has to be something big pretty much but yeah please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy the content comment on what you see next and subscribe for more content let's get into it Today has literally been one of the craziest nights of hockey I can even remember. I am struggling to keep up. On one hand, it's over. If it wasn't already, it is now. Just give Bedard the Calder. I've seen enough. He's been fantastic. Scored some absolute beauties. This one was just filthy. But what we saw today was new even for Bedard. Having said that, Trevor Zegras wasn't about to be shown up by the new kid on the block. Yeah, I remember seeing Zegras one time ago and... I mean, not a long time ago. I haven't been following hockey for that long. Few, probably a few months ago. And then all of a sudden he disappeared. And all of a sudden everybody was talking about Bedard, not about Zegras. But I thought he was supposed to be also one of the big guys coming up. Block as the talent in the NHL is off the charts. So in a night that saw the great one himself in attendance, plenty of action from Bennington to Bedard, no glove, no problem, and a little NHL history, we've got a lot to get to, so let's get to it. As the Blackhawks came into St. Louis, just three minutes into the first, Bedard setting up Phillips, shoots and hits Johnson in front, who stayed down. And so going the other way, Buchnevich finds Thomas all alone and he rifles it home to open the scoring on the first shot to beat Soderbloom as again Johnson catching one in the hands led to the Blues opening up the scoring but not so fast Bedard in shoots and it's wide seconds later he's behind the net all alone and he scores stunning the crowd it's the Michigan from Bedard and are oh. you freaking oh. kidding me the touch here making the decision in a split second seeing that he has the space scoops it up and thank you very much I truly have few words it's 13 of the year and even he almost can't believe what he just did with Gretzky in the house this one's gonna be in the highlight package as he ex imagine scoring something like this in the presence of Wayne Gretzky himself and then you have the goat himself telling you yeah kid that was good must have felt very nice steps is called it. I'm booking it now. But over in Anaheim, someone who knows a little something about the Michigan must have heard because down 3-1 late, Zegras behind the net and just filth. My goodness gracious. Whiz he scored the same thing, like the same way uh, but that scored. That's crazy. Speed. Zegras picks this up and tucks it in and tells it a bedtime story. Just wow. Again, not to be outdone, this one impressed me even more, if I'm honest. The speed at which he did this, so impressive. And it makes for, obviously, the first time in NHL history that we had two Michigans on the same night. We've only had six in the NHL. Oh, wait. So the way they scored it is called the Michigan. I thought he was talking about the state. Uh, it completely flew over my mind. But yeah, now I, I, I got it. Total. Two of them came today. Wild. Damn. But as I catch my breath, let's go back to St. Louis, where just 20 seconds after this, Chicago pushing Tenardi on net, and they score another. Back to back, it's Beauvillier in front, getting a piece of this one, and suddenly the Blackhawks were ahead. Then as we neared the end of the period, Thomas would get called for hooking, putting the Hawks on the power play, and while they couldn't get it to go before the end of the first, this one carried over to the second, where they got things rolling. Not 30 seconds in radish to Kurachev on net and it's Felino on the rebound as they score juicy rebound here and the Hawks were up by a pair and that's where nearing the midway point of the game Donato in to end whistle and he goes into Bennington hard and this was a wild play Falk pushing end whistle into Bennington and his stick gets up and into Bennington's mask definitely couldn't have been comfortable but thankfully everyone was all right and with that as we got a mid-game interview with Gretz Blay back to Pareko and he blasted one home to get it back to within one as Pareko would net his sixth. And just minutes later, looking to add to it, a big save on one end would lead
lead to a two-on-one the other way as Radish to Dickinson and the Blackhawks again. Dickinson back toward Tappan gets his 11th to take back the two-goal lead. And so a wild 40 minutes would get us over to the third and final period where things only got crazier. Four minutes in, Blues driving the net and they draw the holding call and despite going on the power play, oh, it was oh, Felino shorthanded, just skates right by Kairou to the backhand and scores. Seemingly a dagger, getting his second of the night to make it a three-goal game. So, all right, a power play wasn't enough. How about a two-man advantage? Murphy called on the cross-check would do just that. Hayes down to Saad and Mylanta. What a goal. Saad with a beauty redirect gets his ninth and gets them within reach. Shortly after, another call and another power play goal as Falk shot on net off neighbors in front and the Blues were suddenly within one. Keeping the foot on the pedal though, Thomas driving in back to Kairou and he scores two in just 23 seconds and we were all square. Two goals in 23 seconds. How often those are? I mean, they said this may never happen again, so I'm pretty sure. It doesn't happen quite often. And so the Blues oh, smelling blood late in the period. Falk in just putting one on net and he scores. A tough one for Soderblom as the Blues come all the way back and suddenly they were in the lead. With After having all the saves the goalie has had throughout the game, he waits until the third period to mess it up all of it. That's crazy. Time expiring, goalie pulled, and Kairou steals it, comes all the way down, and he seals the deal as the Blues, with an unbelievable comeback, make it 7-5, to five, and Bedard cannot believe it. But nonetheless, the Blues, with a huge victory, take this one 7-5, to five, and again, just what a crazy night in hockey. But that's about it for this one. I got to go straight to work on my next video, so I'll see you. All right, guys, please do go for subscribe to subscribe to his channel. And his channel's name is uh, Next Man Up. Let me subscribe right now. But yeah, why did he say this may never happen in hockey again? Is it because of the Mississippi's or because of two goals in 20, what, 23 seconds? Or was it because Gretzky was there enjoying the game? How often those are players like ex players like Gretzky and Mathieu Lemieux and all those big names go to watch games? Especially because I don't think Gretzky played for either of these two teams. Right? He played for the Oilers, I think. And so why was he watching their game? Or is it just something he goes to just injure himself? Please let me know in the comments. And please do like the video if you enjoyed the content. Comment on which is next and subscribe for more content.